meeting will come to order at 7.49 a.m. Thank you for sorting out the technical difficulties. Um, let us- Please enter your access code. Let us pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Please enter your audio PIN followed by the pound or hash sign. If you do not have a PIN, just press pound or hash. Okay. All right. Uh, we have caller number eight who is call who just called in. Uh, I heard I did. I'm having some problem with uh, the web uh, thing. My camera doesn't work and my auto doesn't work, so I called in on the line. Okay, so Steve Harrison is online on the phone. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Um, hello. Hello. Who is? Hi. Um, this is Bob Short from Legacy Architecture. Okay. Bob. I'm also on the phone. Bob is on the line, one of the callers, five, six, seven. Oh, there's Bob. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Uh, identifying possible uh, conflict of interest, and I believe we have one this time. If you have a conflict with the agenda, please identify. Um, this is Dave Gass, and I will not be able to vote on uh, item regarding 820 Indiana Avenue. Okay. Any other conflicts? Okay. Thank you, David. All right. Uh, approving the minutes from the November 4th meeting. Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Dave Gass. Dave Gass. Second. Second by Owen, I think. Um, any objections? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Um, we now have a vacant chair for the chamber. Um, the next item of business is the historic preservation facade design for 1402 South 12th Street. And um, how about our guest, um, Bob Short. Bob, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. And now Chad is back in the council chambers. Chad, you want to kick this off for us? Sure. So uh, Bob Short is with Legacy Architecture. On behalf of the owner at the property at 1402 South 12th Street, this is in the uh, Heritage Square area across from St. Peter Claver Church. Um, the Legacy Architecture is representing Legacy Studios, which it's a photography studio in this building, and they've applied for a facade uh, study on that property. Now, um, in a few years ago, the RDA targeted these funds to um, a specific area of the city. This is not, this property is not part of that um, area. So the area is really Indiana Avenue, A Street in Michigan. Um, so it's really up to the decision of the discussion and decision of the authority whether you would like to proceed with uh, this project outside of the target area. But what I would say is that um, we, since we, we've rolled out some upper floor residential rehab programs to work with property owners to um, take vacant space on the second floor and convert it to housing, we've gotten a lot more interest in this program in the target area and we're working on at least two additional applications as it relates to that. So. Um, it's really up to the uh, RDA whether you want to proceed with this one. Um, we have 100000 budgeted. We've spent about 90000 of it, um, but that, is in, that includes facade studies, which typically are around $4,000 to $5,000, and then uh, it includes construction 
grants for people that move actually into construction to help incentivize them to do a historic remodel. So um, I guess that's it for me. I, I, I would ask you to hear from the applicant what they plan to do with the front of the building because I put a picture of it in the IFC that's attached in the agenda. And it's a brick building that's, rel that's got the characteristics that we typically look for aside from maybe replacing win the front windows and doing replacing some river brick that's on the, our stone on the bottom. Um, the rest of it looks like it's in pretty tip top shape for me. So I'm curious what the architect believes they're gonna be doing to change its historical character. Before you get to that, can I ask a question, Bert? Where are yeah. we with regards to getting new funds? Is the budget come renewed January 1, Chad, or? No, we have to program the funds in our block grant cycle, which happens, uh, typically we get the funds in August of the year. So we apply for the funds in April and receive them in August. And we've used $90,000 already? No, we've used $10,000. We have a balance of 90,000 in that activity. Oh. I misunderstood. I'm sorry. I apologize. But, but you so there's will, plenty of money there. You will recall that, uh, yeah, I mean, there's 90000 but when you get into adding construction grants in there, typically we've given thirty, forty thousand 40000 for people to incentivize them to do the facade renovation um, on the front of them. We did approve, you guys approved a couple weeks ago, 1136 Indiana which is being worked on. And then there's two more that I know of on A Street that are probably coming in shortly too. So that has to all be taken into consideration. Okay, let's hear from Bob. Bob, if you'd like to talk to us a little bit about what's in store here. Hello, sure. Um, I would like to start out by thanking you for reviewing this application um, and apologize that Jennifer Lurkey um, our project architect who visited the site was unable to attend this meeting due to a prior engagement. Um, it's my understanding that the building is not actually brick, but that it is clad in a fibrous faux brick siding. Um, and so the owner wants to investigate repairing or replacing the siding. Um, there are also believed to have been historic windows on the Georgia Avenue side of the building. The building sits on the corner of South 12th and Georgia um, that she wants to investigate the historic size and openings of those windows um, to consider restoring those window openings. There's also a second floor porch over the garage on the Georgia Avenue side of the building. Um, that she wants to replace the guardrail of the porch. She wants to investigate repair of possible carpenter ant damage in the exterior walls and repair um, cracks in the foundation that are visible on the exterior, as well as repair or replace wood shingle in the side gable ends and address some buckled pavement um, between the sidewalk and the building. And as um, Chad mentioned, there's also a non-historic stone veneer below the storefront windows that she would like to investigate um, historically appropriate alternatives. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, I, I think that the thing for me is that the authority probably, I don't know, three years ago or so, uh, in order to maximize impact in the city, um, looked at targeting uh, historic preservation and facade renewal to the renewal districts, which are Indiana, Michigan, and 8th Street. So this lies outside of that. And I think for me, that's the issue here. I, I, think, I think the budget could sweep some through, but it's, it's not within the impact area. So we probably should talk about that. If anybody has thoughts about that. Uh, this is Dave Gass. Um, the, the projects that Chad mentioned, what, 
how much in funds could they potentially use of that 90000 Well, the request right now is for $5,000, which is just the design study, but then um, we have a construction portion where they can come back in and request funding uh, <clears throat> with no set amount, really. It's up to the authority, typically, if... If they were putting in forty thousand, we would try to maybe get to forty thousand as a five-year forgivable loan. So it's you know that number. <clears throat> the RDA has changed it. It used to be a set number for construction. Then it basically was they wanted to see the property owner have some skin in the game, and then a decision was made from that point <clears throat> as to what the dollar value would be. So. You know, granted, there's 90,000 out there. When you're talking about $5,000 studies, it's all right. But when you get into construction and the fact that this is all subject to federal wages uh, drives the project costs. Chad, no, what is your recommendation? Chad, what do you think we should do? I think that, I think that, to follow up with what the chair said is that um, we don't make a lot of impact when we do these things sporadically throughout the community. And I think there's more of an impact if we focus in on our commercial areas. Um, I understand that these are all commercial areas, but we have multiple areas of these smaller commercial districts. and. We've had a goal for a number of years of trying to get them at least centered more in a core of the city. So I think we'll have more impact with our money of trying to invest in the target area. Chad, am I understanding that this particular request is for the $5,000 for the architectural review? Yes. At this point. Okay. I'm, I'm struggling, uh, Bert, this is Steve. Yes. Um, I'm struggling you know, just a little bit of trying to understand the componentry of the budget uh, that they're looking at. I mean, the vast majority of things that Bob had recited appear to be general repair and maintenance and mm -hmm. not necessarily um, of historic significance. I mean, I heard railings, sidewalks, um, carpenter ant damage. Um, how much of this ultimately, I mean, the only thing I heard was maybe changing the siding that would be more appealing, but I mean, I, I would imagine that the siding is the historic siding that was on there. And also, you know, this concept of historic windows on one side of the building. I, I mean, I'm not really seeing this is a renovation to a historic site as opposed to being a general repair and maintenance request. Okay. That's if I could speak to that. Yes, Bob. Um, this is Bob Short. If I could um, speak to that question, um, I would say the primary um, components in um, aesthetic would be the siding. Um, I don't believe that that is the historic siding. I think the building dates from the early 20th century and that siding that is on there is likely replacement siding from maybe the 1940s or 50s um, when such cementitious kind of asphaltic siding was a popular replacement material. Um, and then the window openings um, that we want to, this is um, an application for the research grant. Um, so we want to research the historic window opening um, on the street facing side of Georgia. Um, and as for the target areas, I would comment that this building is only like two blocks south of Indiana Avenue that does connect the South 12th Street neighborhood commercial area to Indiana Avenue. So the yes. primary um, aesthetic focus would be on the siding, the researching the historic window openings on the street facing, the two street facing sides of the building and the non expense historic guardrail on the street facing facade. 
Um, this is Roberta. I've got a question for you. Um, what's the likelihood that once the grant, once the architectural review and plans are completed, that the owner or owners will actually proceed with the cost of renovations? Um, that is a great question. Um, unfortunately, I have not personally spoken to the owner regarding what her plans are, but I know she um, very much wants to address many of these issues. I mean, in particular, the guardrail is a safety issue. Um, and I know one of her hopes of applying for the grant was to develop a master plan so that she can budget to complete the work and get bids from contractors and um, contract with them. This is Dave Gass. David? I, I, to me, the, I, I'm, having, I'm struggling with why we're even talking about project merits here. It, to me, the issue is, are, are we, are we going to break? Are we going to change our requirements now? <laughs> um, and I, I, haven't, I don't see why we should be changing our requirements. So if we're not changing our requirements, you know, as meritorious as this project is, and I don't want to dispute that at all, I think it's all great. The bottom line is it's not outside of our program. And so to me, the answer to these requests is, sorry, it's outside the program, you're not eligible. Now, if you want to come to the council or the RDA and say, will you change your guidelines? But I feel like, I feel like I'm being asked to approve the project and then, you know, change the guidelines. Well, to me, they're, they're really two separate items. <laughs> and the first one about changing the guidelines is a major policy decision that shouldn't be sort of just sort of swept in with a review of some architectural changes. Um, I, I just don't see the reason for changing the guidelines at this point. And so, therefore, the issue of whether they're whether they're applying or not is moot. They can't apply. It's not they're not eligible. It's like any other program. So, I, I mean, I concur with Mr. Gass and Mr. Harrison. I don't think this is in our and with your recommendation, Chair. I think we should move on. Okay, Chair, uh, did you clarify the eligibility of the project? It's my understanding that the program is available. To any commercial project in the city and that the target areas are a prioritization um, and I don't know if you can speak to what other projects have currently applied for these funds the prioritization Bob is is the 8th Street area the Indiana Avenue corridor which we've been working on for years and um, Michigan Avenue, so that the the parameters surround the downtown area, and they have been in place for the authority for I I'd, I'd say five years at least. Um, that we we actually have a document outlining that. So this, um, as, as Mr. Gass said, this is um, outside of the boundary lines. I understand. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to represent, um, you know, our potential client. Um, but my understanding is that any commercial property in the city is eligible to apply for the grant. It's just that disbursement of the funds is to be prioritized by the target areas. And I'm curious if Chad can speak to any leads he has or um, inquiries he's received um, that he expects other projects in the target areas might come um, that should receive funding prioritized over projects outside of the target area. Yeah, Bob, I, I think you're, you're probably accurate. The, the grant is, it, like all HUD money, it's for use within the city of Sheboygan. It's it's the prioritization of where we put those limited funds in any given year. So you, you, you spoke to it clearly. Um, Chad, do you, did, do you want to follow up with Bob? 
I, I need to have a motion about this, but let's hear from Chad. I, I'm not privy to say that at this point because they haven't filed yet. It's just people we're talking to. So um, I don't think it's necessary to release who they are until they've submitted an application. But like any project, we have multiple conversations before they submit an application. Okay. And, and we do know that um, with, with as, as Chad said, with the advent of refurbish your second floor for living. Um, we've, we've gotten more interest in, in the owners of the commercial buildings to do that. Okay, um, Chair will entertain a motion to about this particular project. David Gass, do you wanna do it? Sure. So moved, I guess, I, I guess is the motion to deny the project or the request because of our existing, you know, policy and guidelines on prioritization of the funds. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. David Gass moved. David Soxy seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, we've got everybody voted. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Bob. Um, yeah. I, good luck moving forward, and um, hopefully there will be a day when we've got bigger <laughs> bucks and more priority. So thank you very we, much. Thank you for considering the application. It's a fantastic program that is really benefiting the city. Great, thank you for that. All right, thank you, okay. bye. Bye-bye. Um, okay, uh, next discussion 3.2 on potential modification of a current business loan. And um, <coughs> this is one that um, Dick Gass has a conflict of interest. Chad, you wanna kick this one off? Sure. So Steve Schmidt uh, is. Go ahead. Yeah, Bert, I'm going to drop off if you don't mind then, since okay. I can't, I guess, really sure. participate. So. All right. We still have a quorum. Thank you. Okay. You bet. So Chair Steve Schmidt is on the line representing eight, the owners of HH2. In your packet, there was a letter submitted by uh, Paul Weaver. And basically, you can see the list of operation expenses. So the property we're talking about is where Pacifico Grill is. Um, <clears throat> and they have real estate taxes of about 30,000, land lease costs is about 13,000, uh, bid district fees of 3,200, and a redevelopment authority business development loan with a balance of around 18,000. So their tenant, as I understand it, and Steve can confirm, but the tenant has asked for a reduction in rent costs, uh, strict really based on the pandemic and the uh, restaurant industry downturn. So they have made the request to us to look at the fees to see if there was anything that could be um, modified or changed in order to make it a little bit more favorable. And what I would say to this uh, request is, um, we don't have a lot of authority as the redevelopment authority over the real estate taxes uh, or the bid district's fees. So the two items we can really look at is the land lease costs and the loan with the city. Um, and I think we all understand how important it is to have a tenant in, an in that building, which is a prime entrance to the South Pier in our downtown. Um, so i am got a couple thoughts on uh, how we could handle this situation, but um, I will hold those until we hear from the rest of the group. Okay, thoughts, comments from the group? I guess, Chad, I, I've got a, a, a question just about consistency. The land lease component of this is the land lease consistent with the way we've monetized other land leases with similar tenants along the riverfront? We haven't modified a ground lease 
uh, payment terms since we came out of the recession in 2007. So I want to say maybe in 2010 or 11 is when we modified land leases. Um, that can be a stick, stickery, sticky slope um, to modify the land lease and then everybody and not do nothing, you know, don't do anything with the rest of them. Um, but there hasn't been a modification to the land lease cost for at least five years for any other tenant. Chad, what's the other, the other criteria would be the loan. How, how much of the loan, how much of the loan is outstanding? So they just made a relatively large payment and got it just about current. I think they're behind on um, three, three months, um, which doesn't equate to all that much. So the, the, that, the loan is probably the one that we have the most flexibility with. Um, and whether that's just forgiving the loan or, um, you know, one thought I had is, could we get them to pay the three uh, months that are delinquent, get them current, and then forgive the rest of it, um, which appears to probably be about $18,000. Um, and if that would help in their, land, in their rental costs, we'd have to hear from Steve what his thoughts are on that. Okay, Steve, Steve Schmidt, um, would you like to? Yeah, it, it's been kind of a struggle, unfortunately. You know, we've had this property for 12 years, and it, it just with everything on top of with the ground lease and just the area, it just, it's tough. I mean, we're assessed about $412,000 for the land, and we still get taxes on, property taxes on top of that for that amount, too. And besides playing the, the annual ground lease. So it's just, it's just tough. I mean, we, Paul and I have not drawn a, a cent out of this project. Uh, we're trying to keep businesses in. We, we did the switch from uh, the Highland House to, uh, to our other uh, organization with, and then trying to uh, get another tenant in. But, you know, that, that didn't uh, pan out and it's just, it's tough. It's, up in the business and having that property and, and size that we have. But we we wanted to do it to, to show that we can be positive in downtown Sheboygan. But it's just the scenario that we have is just not working. And we have our tenant that just is getting to the point where he's close to closing the doors too. So so what that's where it initiated the, the contact to go back to Chad to, to see what you guys can do for us. So Steve, if, if for example, we were to, um, if you came current, which I would request, <clears throat> we would forgive the rest of the loan. Does that benefit accrue to your tenant so that the tenant can stay? Paul, Paul would have to answer that. Um, and I thought he was going to be on the conference call. I'm sorry about that. So he's, he's a finance side of things. I do the building repairs. <laughs> Um, I, we, I, that would be in the positive direction. I, I think part of, part of the redevelopment uh, issue is that we would like to see, we would like to see tenants. We would like to see businesses. We would like to see, uh, full buildings. So, um, it would be important to me that I, I, I don't have a Bert, I don't have a promise. I mean, I we are what they're asking us is to do is to drop from about a twelve hundred twelve thousand dollar a month rent down to about a sixty five hundred dollar a month rent. Uh, and this month is supposed to be nine thousand dollars. I'm still waiting for a, a check for that. He was hoping to actually reduce December's rent down to the sixty five hundred dollars also. So we're, we're trying to, this all came about in early November. We're trying to talk to our bank about what they can do with financing for us, refinancing that, so that potentially needs to go out and borrow, you know, go out and uh, get another uh, an appraisal done too, which is another 4,500 bucks to do an appraisal. So it's just, it's money that we don't have either. I mean, we're just, we're trying to keep things going. So I, I don't have a guarantee for you, Roberta, if you're looking for that from our from our tenant. So 
And Madam Chair, I think there, there's a couple of questions that are being brought up and uh, Steve's point about the ground lease and the replication of taxes, uh, I think is probably a consistent problem that we probably have on other properties, which should maybe be on the agenda of RDA looking forward and just looking and reevaluating and saying, is this fair to these tenants and giving them a fair opportunity to keep their businesses viable? Because I would suspect that there's a number of ground leases that we have along the riverfront that a lot of these businesses are struggling right now just because they're all dealing with the exact same things that, that these folks are. Um, so on the on the ground lease component of this, uh, I, I don't know how quickly we could respond, but I would think that you'd want to be consistent with the rest of our rest of our uh, folks that are involved with these programs. However, on the loan. Um, do we have precedence of forgiving this? I mean, was the loan granted for renovations or was this a component of the job creation? Uh, help me how the loan was, it was created. Well, it's tax. a, all business loans are a job creation loan. It was, it was done when they brought Sprecher in to do building modifications and bring the building up to code. To answer your question about do we have precedence You'll recall, I think it was maybe six weeks ago, uh, Dave Gass made a decision to forgive the Black Pig loan. So, um, because they came in with problems on the pan with the pandemic. So, there is precedence and precedence, and it's very recent precedence. Okay. Well, first, I don't think it was Dave Gass making the decision. The committee made the decision, but um, the uh, so we. I mean, we. You know, again, in order to be consistent, that would not be outside of the realm of something we could do to assist the business in order to keep it viable. That is correct. Um, how does the committee feel? I, I have a bit of a problem with uh, forgiving a loan that's already in arrears. Um, how, much, how much to become current? Chad, do you know the dollar amount? For the three months to be current. I hope to get those numbers out of finance, and I did not. But um, the we did get a check for I want to say almost eighteen thousand dollars to get them current. They were they were delinquent from twenty nineteen, I think. So they've paid substantially. I think, frankly, I've I've been in contact with Paul about it, and it was really just the timing of when the city sent the invoice and when they sent the check. Um, so. I don't think it's going to be, they, they've been very uh, good at trying to keep this thing current in the situation we're in. Um, so I wouldn't let that necessarily hold up the decision. It would be another, another question, I'm, I'm sorry, another question I guess I wouldn't have for Steve. I mean, we're dealing with a second party here. So Steve is representing the tenant. Uh, why is the tenant not coming and asking for this? Not no, the tenant. I don't think he's representing the tenant. Yeah. No, I'm not representing the tenant. I'm representing us to be able to, we had a request from our tenant to reduce the rent. So we as the, Paul and I are the landowners and, and the building owner um, to request that, so. Right, but under the, the loan, is the, lo the loan is not to you, it's to your tenant? No. no. It's to no. us, it's to us. Okay, I'm sorry. It was the Spreckers. It was when we were operating Spreckers. I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm after, not... after Highland House, after our our uh, partner left us on that, and then we were looking for another restaurant uh, to be able. We operated the restaurant, and as Spreckers, we had a, an agreement with the uh, Spreckers, but then a lot of their cl businesses closed up too. The one in Bayshore, the one. There was, I think, three of them that had closed. They only, I think, have one or two open right now. One, in, uh, and that and, and that scenario just was very heavily cost uh, uh, effective, and a lot of menu items and things like that. And just it, it just didn't work in Sheboygan here. So just to just to understand, though, the the benefit of the loan forgiveness would accrue directly to you folks, which would allow you maybe some headspace to negotiate the rent with the tenant. That's, That's correct. Okay. That's correct, Steve. Okay. That is hopefully what we hope will happen. 
we're, we're looking at some guy came up with buckets. You know, I'm looking at the different buckets. Uh, guy came up with that scenario uh, with buckets. So I'm trying to find uh, the different what? buckets that we have and <laughs> see if we can empty some of those buckets right now so we can make it affordable for these people to stay. <coughs> so they're good people and uh, they have their operations in Plymouth, wanted to expand the Sheboygan and then the pandemic hit and unfortunately, you know, things get the fans. R Roberta, Roberta, this is Chad. Let me throw a little bit more. Yes. Let me throw a little bit more clarification. I just received an email from the finance department. So, the Sprecher loan has a balance of one hundred and nineteen thousand. The eighteen thousand six hundred and forty-five dollars that's listed in uh, Paul Weaver's letter is their annual payments, and they're looking for. I think the the discussion is whether we would not forgive the full loan but we would just forgive the year of payments to get their hopefully tenant in the better econo economy times to move forward so the 18,645 that's listed on the letter is the annual debt service payments on that note and that's what they're looking for some modification on do we know what interest rate they have like, yeah. can we go to interest only for a year or 18 months? 2.25%, 2, 2. I believe. How about interest only for 18 months? A anything would be helpful. We'll, we'll have to see how this works. So we're trying to, like I said, look at the different scenario, different buckets that we can approach. So Paul's working with the bank right now. I'm trying to help with with you guys, what you have. Okay. Chad, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, I think it's critical to keep a tenant in that building because when it was shuttered, it was a bad doom on the city. And I would be, I you know, I, I'm, I'm supportive of the interest only um, payments if that works, but I think we need to have a backup plan given the, huge reductions that they're getting requests from their tenant and um, I'm not opposed to forgiving one years of principal and interest um, and just having them you know we revisit this a year from now and see where we're at, where we're at and you know and hopefully we'll get the rest of it paid back but it also keeps a tenant in that building. Jay, could you help us again on what the <clears throat> the precedents that we've kind of set? I mean, we've indicated that there is hardship requests that we have considered. Um, so was that a, a total loan forgiveness? Was it just a current portion of that loan that we've we've done with uh, uh, with another applicant? That was full loan forgiveness. Yeah, what did we do with Black Creek? Yeah. David, Soxie, say that again. What did we do with Black Creek? Is the question. Right? Yeah, that's correct. I'm, I wasn't trying to include their name, but that's a, yes. It was full well, that's loan. Long we've done, correct? It was historically full. we did a few more, but it was several years ago. Yeah. What did we do there? I'm sorry, I didn't catch Chad? that. What? Which one are you talking about? What did we do with Black Pig? I'm looking. Just hold tight. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this is James. Um, Steve, James. how confident are you that um, you know if they're asking for this rent reduction, you know if they get if they if you're able to grant that request, are they confident they can they can maintain their business for the next six months to a year at least at sixty five hundred a month or whatever you said? Uh, I hope so. I mean, we're going to revisit it. Our proposal is to 
for $9,000 for the month of uh, December, January, February, March, uh, the 6,500, and then the revisit in April. Um, they would also like to, they had some, some palm trees that they wanted to install, I think last year, but there were some issues with that, putting those potentially on the boardwalk, which is the city's boardwalk, but that would look nice down there. It would be, as you know, this year was very helpful with the city allowing uh, uh, restaurants to, to have more outside seating areas. And it's very popular, even in fact, allowing to close down the street. So trying to do that would extend their season uh, and keeping the heaters going and stuff like that. So it's just trying to be able to do this. Don't know, we don't know how this is gonna pan out with the pandemic and how soon we're gonna be able to, if there's a new normal or what, so. But they're they're trying. I mean, it's just they're they're just struggling right now. So and I I, I see that and with people dining out, it's you know some get it, some don't, and and trying to make it work. So it's just it's tough. So so to we add. Have the on Okay. Sorry to answer Dave Soxie's question. The at the September twenty uh, September second meeting, the uh, the balance of the Black Pig loan was one hundred and seventeen thousand. Um, they had number of other <clears throat> debt payments with Hiawatha Bank, but the motion was to forgive principal and interest payments until May of twenty twenty one. So. I think we ended up forgiving the entire the entire loan payments for that for that stretch of time, right? Sorry. Principal and interest, yes. So I think it's feasible to propose to forgive principal and interest payments for um, a certain amount of time. Frankly, it's e it'll be easier for the finance department if we can just do principal and interest and say during this time then going back and trying to recalculate all this for interest only so <clears throat> um, I guess I you know I would support you know maybe a you know by frankly you know by May or June of next year hopefully summer will be picking up again and and the income will be coming in and maybe it just needs to be forgiven throughout the winter months so maybe it could be a very. Okay, I guess I would like to. Maybe it could like to be make a, a motion um, that uh, hopefully is consistent with what we had done uh, in a in a prior situation, and that is to forgive principal and interest payments for the, for six months, uh, and at that point in time, loan needs to be current, and uh, going forward, payments would need to be made. But the motion would be for six months. Uh, interest in, and principal forgiveness, and then the loan goes back into normal payment. Okay. What is that worth? How much money? Can't be much. Sorry, what was that question? Oh, what is the monthly payment, Chad? 18, 18, 000. That's a year. So it's a 9000 It's not that much, people. I'm sorry. Uh, the original request was the original request for $18,000, which is an annual payment. Is that accurate? That's what they pay. It's not an annual payment. They pay that annually by the month. So take 18000 and divide it by 12. 1500 bucks. Right. And this guy's looking to go from 12 to 6 a month. Correct. I'm just trying to be consistent, Dave, because we, we just keep moving the rock ahead and, you know, there's going to be other requests and what else. And, um, I think this is a bridge and a cash flow question. And if this is a bridge um, until better times are coming, I mean, they would have the right to come back at that point in time if we don't get out of this. But I think uh, from a cash flow point of view, uh, I think we ought to be able to assist them and be consistent we've done with uh, another applicant. Okay, so we've got a motion for six months, 
do we count the three months that weren't paid or do we move forward or do we spend the six months to 12 months? To be honest, I don't, I don't care. Um, I mean, it all adds up to the same thing. So if we want to take the prior three months, I am concerned that they are going to need to get to spring. And again, yeah. just looking at a cash flow standpoint, um, you know, I, I can't imagine that January, February, and March are going to be great sign on months, even if everything else goes away. So, you know, it would be nice to be able to get them to April, May, June of, of next year, but um, I well, do want to. Getting them to June. So, chair, so, chair, this my is. Question again, my chair. question again is what about the three months they're in arrears? because it wouldn't be a, a seven months or an eight month forgiveness, it would be 12 months. Well, not to me. If you're three, years, three months in the rear and it's December, it's nine months, right? Okay, so. If you go to the end of May. So if we extend the uh, forgiveness of interest and principal for nine months. That would include the three months in arrears and the six months moving forward. Is that what we're thinking? Chair, this I think that would be consistent with what we've done. Yes. So, okay. Please, I don't think we can, until we discuss it for everyone, I don't think we can do anything different. No. Okay, Steve Harrison, is that okay with you? Yeah, that can be a friendly amendment. Okay. If if okay. I so if there I there is the most chair if I could so the auditors are gonna want an actual date in the minutes, so can we say June thirtieth or June first? I'd give them June thirty. Okay. Thank you. It's cold in June. You are correct. Okay. There is a motion on the floor to extend the loan forgiveness to include the three months in arrears to June 30th of 2021, both principal and interest. Was there a second? I'll second, James. James Owen seconded. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain, Chair. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like to go into to, uh, um, um, what do you call it? Private session? Closed session. We Closed session. Thank you. Today. I have a question on something. We don't have that we on the agenda. We can't do that today. It has to be posted. Great. But we can we can put it on the next agenda. That's fine. Okay. Um, all right. There's a motion on the floor. Any other comments? We voted. We voted on it already. But oh, Dave. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dave. Dave uh, um, abstained. So are are we still? Good? Yes. Yes. We still have a quorum. Chair votes aye. Yep. So we had. Mitchell, Fuliki, Paneski, Harrison, and Owen voting. And Soxie abstaining. Correct. Okay, anything else that we have? Nope. Anything else on our agenda chat or did we do it? We exhausted the agenda. The only thing I just want to give the RDA a, a heads up on is we had previously talked about those buildings on North Commerce Street, um, and we had given six month options to uh, Philippe to Philippe to do the rendezvous French restaurant. He has withdrawn his interest in that property. Uh, he's actually closing his business as of the end of the year. Um, so. Uh, we're back to square one on what to do with it, but we're talking to the other party and um, we'll see where, where we go from here. I would, I would add that Philippe talked with me and it wasn't necessarily just business. There were personal issues and he will be moving. Correct. Okay. 
Um, any other thoughts, comments? Yeah, um, maybe, well, I'll say this in open session. Uh, first of all, uh, I do a lot of business with Weaver on other things, so that's why I abstain, Chair. I didn't okay. realize this was the Weaver Schmidt property, but having said that, I, I'm not so concerned about Weaver and Schmidt as I am about Pacifico and or Black Pig. I think the world has really gotten hurt in hospitality, and it's a dramatic change for whether you're running a hotel, an airline, a travel service, et cetera. I don't think our, our government has done a good enough job trying to target and help those people. I think if we have motivation to help, I think we should tie something in our help to the rent adjustment for the tenants. In the case of Black Pig, it's, he's his own tenant. But I, mean, I, I think dramatic help could really help these businesses because if they don't work out, you know, what, what's wrong with my thinking is, I know we'll get the money out of Steve and, and Paul, if you're looking at it as a pragmatist, but I'm trying to be a generalist to say, if we're treating everybody the same, I know Black Pig does not have deep pockets. And I would think if we could help these people more aggressively, knowing that they're passing it on in this rents to keep these guys there, I don't even know how they're staying open. I, I stopped at Pacifico the other night to pick something up and uh, it was me and three other people. Uh, walking in. There was nobody parking cars, if you catch my drift. And this was on a Friday night at 5.30, quarter to 6. Well, there wasn't a guy at the bar. I, I don't know how they can make a $6,000 payment, much less 12. So, and I know Black Pig is suffering the same thing. There's no banquet business to save a, a lit. These guys don't have drive throughs or anything that, you know, everybody's trying to go through. So, Chad, I don't know if there's anything that you can think of, but if you'd look at these notes that we have, if it, and I, where I have a problem is then we're treating people differently. And, and I don't know how to do that judiciously. But if I was, if I had, was all powerful, I would say, well, how can we reduce the note and make sure that that note reduction gets passed along in lease payments? Okay, if we give you $5,000 a month for the next 12 months or $60,000, that goes towards the lease. So I hate, I, I think it's a good discussion. I hate to cut you off, but we do not have an agenda item to talk about this. So um, in, you well, know, open. I raise it for you to, study, to come back and tell us what you think. That's well, and there's other, there's other funding mechanisms available than just these loans as well. So if these businesses are indeed struggling, they need to, you know, reach out to the city and there's opportunities for other CARES Act funding to help them. Okay, let's make sure that the owners of Pacifico know that. All well, right. Steve's on the line, isn't he? Steve? Steve Schmidt? He's on mute. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I'm, I took another call. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, thank you, Bye. Okay, um, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just one. I'm sorry. One I'm quick, uh, quick point, Chair, uh, yes. is I would like to see get on the agenda at some point in time this whole discussion of ground lease and property taxes that we go back and review this from a viability standpoint that we're treating tenants appropriately. I mean, this has come back as a, a number of conversations that it appears that we're double dipping, that we're charging a ground lease, which maybe should include the property taxes, but they're paying a ground lease in addition to paying the property taxes. And I just like to understand is the monetization of those two payments, does that actually exceed what they normally would have just paid as property taxes on the, on the property? You know, that some of those two, is it more than they would normally pay for a rent and and you know a triple net or whatever. Okay. All right. Let's make sure, Chad, if you would make sure that um, the that discussion, lease and taxes, at some point gets onto our agenda. It's just that item. Um, it will. My thought is we are working with an interim finance director currently, so it it may be more judicious of us to have that conversation mm -hmm. with the permanent finance director. So, um, but we should put, indeed, put that on the agenda. 
All right, yes. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. It's been moved by Soxy. Is there any objection? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much for your time this morning, gentlemen. Thank you.